Hello learners, I am Dr. Priyanka Gautam. Today we are discussing senior secondary biology course and I am welcoming you at the NIOS. In the earlier class, I had already talked to you about the various organelles, the type of the various organelles those are present into the cell. So in this, we will go through the various types of cells. So uh, there are the cellular organelles that uh, is present in every cell, but it is not so that every organelle is present in each kind of cell. So some cells, they have the some combination of the organelles and some have the other kind of organelles. Like some cells may have the chloroplast, some have the mitochondria, endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi body. And there are the some other cells that may have mitochondria, centriole, Golgi, endoplasmic reticulum and nuclear membrane. And even there are the some cells, those are more simpler and they lack the complex membranous organelles. So on the basis of this, the biologists have divided or classified these cells into the two major types. The, this is the prokaryotic cell and eukaryotic. So prokaryotic cell, this group basically include the bacteria and archae. And these bacteria and archae, they have a various characteristic feature. They do not have the typical nucleus that is bound by the nuclear membrane or they do not contain the mitochondria, chloroplast, Golgi, an extensive network of endoplasmic reticulum. And these prokaryotic cells, they contain the DNA and the enzyme, but the DNA is not being bounded by the envelope. So uh, the prokaryotic cell that is containing the bacteria and archae, in this, the archae are not in more medical profession concerned because number of the archae, or we can say that none have been identified as disease causing. And typically, these are being found into the extreme environmental conditions like the extreme pH, extreme salt concentration, temperature that make it impossible for most of the organism to survive. And the other category of this prokaryotic cell is the bacteria. And of the bacteria, about 5% cause disease like the tuberculosis, strep throat, gonorrhea and the acne. So the prokaryotic cell in which the bacteria are of most concern and there are the some features of these bacteria or the, these microbes like they are being surrounded by the capsule or the slime layer. They are containing the capsule and the slime layer that is made up of the variety of components like bacteria. The layer that is present in the bacteria, it is responsible for the ability to stick to the surface and that is why they resist the phagocytic process. And many of the bacteria, they also have the fimbri and the hair-like protein structures. And due to these structure, they also stick to the surface, even it helps to object for the movement. The cell wall of the bacteria is made up of a carbohydrate or protein complex that is called the peptidoglycan. And this layer, the cell, uh, it provides the strength to resist the osmotic pressure change and also give the shape to the organism. Then uh, just uh, beneath the cell wall, there is the cell membrane. This is also thinner and slightly different in the chemical composition from the eukaryotic cell. It carries out the same function as the cell membrane in the eukaryotic cell. And in the bacteria or these prokaryotic cells, they have the uh, DNA in the form of loop in the cytoplasm. Next is the eukaryotic cell. So the eukaryotic cell contain the true nucleus and most of the membranous organelles. So eukaryotic cell can be further divided into the various category because there are the number of combinations of these cells are present or we can say that number of the combination of organelles are present. On that basis, we can differentiate the eukaryotic cell into the different kingdoms that is the plants, fungi, protozoa, algae and animalia. Of these kingdoms, the plant and the algae, they both are apart from the other organism as they contain the green color, which indicates that, that these cells contain chlorophyll. Another distinguished characteristics of the plants and algae is that they both contain the cellulose in their cell wall. But there is another group that is containing the cell wall, but it lacks the chlorophyll in the chloroplast that is known as the fungus. So now we have the different groups that is the plants, animals, fungi, plants and uh, the algae of that they all have the different organelles on that basis they can be differentiated. Eukaryotic organism that lack cell wall and cannot photosynthesize are placed into the separate group and organism that contain only the cell are called the protozoans like the amoeba and paramecium. 
So, on that basis they are being divided into the number of the different groups because the organelles have the same general structure and function regardless of the kind of cell in which they are found. We can learn more about the how mitochondria function in plant by studying how mitochondria function in animals. So, there is common feature among all the living organisms with regard to their cellular structure and function. This is the difference between the different organisms like the uh, algae, fungus and now we can go with the difference between the plant cell, how it differ from the animal cell. There are the number of similarities, those are, those are found in between the plant cell and animal cell. Like the plant cell and animal cell both have the cell membrane and it is encloses the cell. But uh, there are number of similarities like they both are filled with the cytoplasm that is a gel like substance containing the chemicals needed by the cell. Both have the nucleus where the DNA is stored. They both have the ribosomes where the protein uh, builders of the cell and the both plants and animals have the mitochondria that use the oxygen to break down food and release energy. Both plants and animals they both have the vacuoles instead like animal cell have the smaller vacuole in comparison to the plant cells. Then uh, there are some more similarities like both have the endoplasmic reticulum where the system of tube transport proteins and both have the Golgi bodies to distribute protein outside the cell. Instead of these number of similarity, there are the number of differences in between the plant cell and animal cell. So, they are being divided into the different kingdoms. Like plant cell have the cell wall that provide structure, animal cell do not have the cell wall. A few large animal cell have more than one nucleus, but plant cell always have just one nucleus. So, plant cell have chloroplast for the photosynthetic process but animal cell do not have. And uh, there are other differences like animal cell use mitochondria for energy production while plant cell used chloroplast for energy production. And animal cell tend to have many number of small vacuoles but plant cell have only one large vacuole. Animal cell they have the lysosome that is containing the number of destructive enzymes but plant cell do not have these kind of uh, membrane bound organelles. So, learner uh, till now we had uh, gone through that uh, what are cells, what are the number of cell organelles are present and how the cell is being differentiated from one type of the cell to the another type of cell. Now, the question that comes to our mind is that what or how many number of the molecule those are present, they can come into the cell and they can come out to the cell. So, there are the number of mechanisms through which the molecule can come into the cell and go out to the cell. This is including like passive transport, active transport, endocytosis and exocytosis. Because why these uh, mechanisms are required? Because cell has to stay alive and they have to take nutrition and they have to eliminate the waste product, waste product or other byproduct of metabolism. So, there are several mechanisms that allow the cell to carry out the process of characteristics of life. So, first we will go with the passive transport. Passive transport is the process when there is no requirement of the energy and the molecule move according to the gradient. Gradient means they are moving according to the difference in the concentration, according to the pressure, according to the charge. So, why they are moving? They are moving to equalize the gradient because they are moving towards the low concentration and they move until the concentration become equalized in all the solution. So, this passive transport is basically of three type the diffusion, osmosis and facilitated diffusion. So, first one is the diffusion. So, diffusion as we know that there are the number of the molecule and each molecule has its own kinetic energy due to which they move from higher concentration to the lower concentration. Like if we place the sugar cube into a water in a, into a glass of water, you can see that after some time the molecule of the sugar start moving. So, they are moving from the higher concentration to the lower concentration and after some time all the sugar molecule mix into the water until the equilibrium has been obtained. When a kind of molecule completely disperse and the movement is equal in all direction, this place or this state we call as dynamic equilibrium. As the cell we know that it is made up of the phospholipid and the protein molecule. So, there are the number of the molecule those are in constant motion because there are the number of temporary opening are formed that allow the small molecule to cross 
from one side of the membrane to the other side. So, molecules those are close to the membrane they are in constant motion as well. They are able to move in and they are able to move out by a passage that is formed into the cell membrane by the opening. So, the difference in the concentration of the molecule is known as the concentration gradient or the diffusion gradient and this movement of the molecule takes place until no such gradient is exist. The next process is the osmosis. This is the another important feature of the passive diffusion. The difference is that in this the all membrane we know that they all are selectively permeable. What is the meaning of selectively permeable? Selectively permeable means that the membrane will allow only the certain molecule to pass across it and will prevent the other molecule for doing so. And in the process of the osmosis, the water molecule is the one that easily diffuses through the cell membrane and the net movement of water molecule through a selectively permeable membrane is known as the osmosis. So, osmosis is a special form of diffusion in which the water molecule flow either into the cell or out to the cell. So, the solution as we know that there are three types of solution, the hypertonic solution, isotonic solution and hypotonic solution. So, solution as it is made up of the solvent and the solute. Hypotonic solution is the one in which the solute is in the higher concentration than the outside. So, definitely the water will flow into the cell and isotonic solution is the one where the solute and solvent both concentration is same inside or outside to the cell. And the hypertonic solution in which the solute is the greater concentration to the outside of the cell. So, the fluid will flow out to the cell and this we can exemplify with the help of the example of red blood cells like in the hypertonic solution the water will move out. So, the RBCs become shrink and isotonic solution there is no difference in the into the cell and in the case of hypotonic solution the water will move inside. So, the cells become swell. Now, there is the another type of passive diffusion that is the more controlled method of the transporting molecule. This is the facilitated diffusion. So, facilitated diffusion is also according to the concentration gradient, but in this the specific carrier proteins are involved. So, the molecule again they are moving from the higher concentration to the lower, lower concentration, but here the carrier proteins are the one that is helping for the movement of the molecule from out to the in or into the out of the cell. This can be exemplified with the example of the glucose molecule across the membrane of certain cells. So, in order for the glucose molecule to pass into these cells, specific proteins are required to carry them across the membrane. So, this particular facilitated diffusion, this does not require any input of energy other than the kinetic energy of the molecule. So, this is facilitated diffusion. Next type of movement is the active transport. The active transport where the mov movement of the molecule takes place, active means they definitely need the energy and the, there are the number of example of this. So, active transport is the process where the molecule may move from the low concentration to the higher concentration. So, for this process definitely they need the expand of the energy. So, the process of using a carrier protein to move molecule up a concentration gradient is called the active transport and for this the example is like the sodium ions such as sodium and potassium ions are actively pumped across the cell membrane. Sodium ions are pumped out of the cell up a concentration gradient and potassium ions are pumped into the cell up a concentration gradient. So, uh, this is the passive transport and active transport. Now, another type of two transport mechanism is the exocytosis and endocytosis. So, endocytosis is the movement of the large material like the particles, organisms and the large molecule into the cell. And this is the movement into the cell and this process can be of two types the phagocytosis and pinocytosis. So, the if the molecule they are of large size and they are cell eating molecule they will come then this process is known as the phagocytosis and when liquid molecule is coming in then this process is known as the pinocytosis. And the exocytosis process is just reverse of this that is the discharge of the molecule out of the cell. So, in this the small vesicles are formed and these vesicles move out 
to the cell and the material into the cell is being digested. So, you can see in this diagram like the cell membrane is pinched off and they are making a vacuum and then with the help of the some digestive enzymes of the lysosome the destruction enzyme digests the material and then rest waste product is going out to the cell and it is by the exocytosis process. So, here you can see the both the endocytosis process as well as the exocytosis process. So, endocytosis is the food when moving into the cell by endocytosis and waste product when they are moving out of the cell that is the exocytosis process. When phagocytosis occurs the material to be engulfed and the surface of the phagocyte and causes a portion of the outer cell membrane to be indented and the indented cell membrane is pinched off inside the cell to form the sac containing the engulfed material. So, this particular sac we called it as a vacuole in the case of phagocytosis while in the case of the pinocytosis because this is a liquid material the size of the sac is very smaller. So, that is why this is called as a vesicle. So, learners so I think uh, you might have uh, learned something into this class and uh, it is uh, good knowledge that I had been given to you. So, thanking you.